Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Geek Center. My name is Corey Morissette. I am, of course, the Right Honorable Geek Minister of the Movie Trivia Face-Off. And we had another tremendous week uh, in the Geektacular division in the Face-Off. Completely by accident, it worked out that we decided who got the number 36 draw in World War Geek and the number one uh, draw in World War Geek all in the same week. Uh, like, not planned at all. It was just kind of luck of the draw, and that's the kind of luck we've been having with the drawing for World War Geek. It's been absolutely fantastic. And here joining me, uh, the uh, first part of the show here, is the man who drew number 36, or that final number, into World War Geek. His name is Colton, the Supernova Roberts. How's it going today, Colton? It's going great. Thank you, Corey. First of all, congratulations on that big win. Um, you, you didn't know coming in what you were playing for, but we let you know before the match, it was for the final spot uh, in World War Geek. Did that kind of, now you had to have been nervous anyway for your very first match did that just uh, amp up the nerves a little bit oh it absolutely did um it definitely made me a lot more nervous uh knowing that i was going to be participating for number 36 uh, than if i had known it was another number or if i hadn't known at all um it definitely ranked up the nerves quite a bit um yeah, it was a it was a it was a good experience, and I thank you very much for allowing me to uh, participate in the league. Of course, so let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, how did you hear about uh, the movie trivia face off? Well, I had been I've been a fan of the Schmodown since season one, and one day they had been talking about uh, the fan leagues on uh, Schmodown backstage, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google some fan leagues and. Um, the movie trivia face-off uh, came on and i think i messaged you on facebook and you said you had to be a patreon which i was i've been a patreon a patron since the beginning so i did that you sent me to the discord channel and i joined and it's i, I haven't turned back since now you're kind of jumping in with both feet there's a lot we kind of throw at you there's the uh you know welcome to the mtfo channel you got to kind of get used to how the discord works uh, and we're also one of the fan leagues that actually takes character uh, into consideration. Is that something you'd maybe like to explore, actually developing uh, a character to, to compete with here in the MTFO? Um, I definitely have some ideas for my character. Um, I definitely, definitely have some ideas for what I want to do with that. It's all according to how things go. And uh, I just want, I just want to be me for right now. And um, it will all be according to, how I do in the league on what arc that takes me in the, in the story. Gotcha. Now, when you joined up in the league, it was at a time where we had a bunch of matches kind of pre-booked. So you were forced to wait uh, probably a good month or so, I would say, uh, before your first match. And originally yeah. you were going to take on uh, Leda Garcia, who is, of course, the sister of uh, uh, a movie trivia chairman, uh, David Garcia. Uh, so you're preparing for her, and then with maybe just a couple weeks to go, she had to bow out due to school commitments, and you found yourself with a new opponent. Did that throw off your training at all in any way? Um, not. I mean, it, it definitely did. Um, it, not as much as my grandfather passing away. That threw off it completely. Like, um, that was an emotional time. Like, I had watched her match, her, her match with David, probably six times just trying to figure out what she was good at and what I was good at. And I, I try and watch every single match and I try and answer along. Like uh, my fiance will always tell me, like she'll be sitting and just watching me rattle off the answers. And she's like, Ooh, you got that one wrong. And she's like, she's weirdly excited when I get them wrong. And when, because she loves just like being able to tick me off or whatever, <laughs> but um yeah it was definitely different um i mean i know that match was back in what february that uh her and david went went up against each other so i'm sure she had had a lot of training that was the only reference point i had so i i watched a few of david's matches too because i know that if he's uh training her he whatever he's weak in she might be weak in as well so well, that's a very smart strategy. Now, uh, you mentioned uh, your grandfather passing. Of course, our deepest condolences to you for that. Uh, compounded with the fact that you're making your debut rookie match against another rookie, um, that first round, how do you feel like you did uh, against Tony Helm in the first round? 
oh, I'll be honest. Like I told um, the interviewer after my match, um, Alex, that I was beating myself up so much because that Suicide Squad question I knew, the Indiana Jones question I knew, and the prison question I knew. And that prison question would come down to bite me in the second round as well. But I knew those answers. And I wrote them down, erased them, and then put the wrong answer. And I've talked to other people about it, and they were like, always go with your first instinct. And I need to, I need to keep to that because I would have went six points into round two, which I still would have chose to spin first, which means I probably would have still got opponent's choice because of the algorithm that is the wheel. But it would have at least given me two more points coming out of the game. So, uh, Still, and going into your second, with opponent's choice, uh, did the best you could with that one. What really saved you in round two was your steals. And you did a fantastic job. I believe you stole four points. Uh, from your opponent and that really set you up for a successful third um uh, maybe the the nerves kind of settle in a little bit halfway through the second there i know this format I, i've competed in this format in the singles division very very hard like you don't realize until you know kind of the lights are on so to speak and elks there asking you questions and you got the timer on just how stressful that can be and sometimes it takes you a little while to get in the groove and we saw that with uh, ethan naftalin and uh, Devonte King, a couple of other rookies this year, you know, three points in the first round. But then once they hit the second, the nerves kind of settle down, and then they start to take off. Did you find that was the case with you? Um, yeah, that first round was really, I was really nervous for that, and then I was nervous during the second round because I kept on having to go to multiple choice. I kept on getting them wrong, and then it was the golden egg question that I knew immediately what the answer was and that that totally changed the game for me like as soon as i got one where i didn't have to question it at all i just was able to say it even though i thought at the time i was like it's golden egg go don't doubt yourself you're you'll you'll make up some other answer go and i said it and i got it and then it made round uh, his round two so much better because every time they asked a question i knew the answer before he went to multiple choice and i like there's one point where they're, when he's asking uh, who got free first in Suicide Squad from uh, Enchantress's uh, powers or whatever, mm -hmm. and I was screaming in my head, Diablo, Diablo, and I had to like pinch my leg not to say it out loud because I knew the question would probably get thrown out, or I don't know how that's ruled here if you accidentally say the answer whenever it's uh, the other player's turn. So I had to like really calm myself down because I knew the answer. It's amazing how one question can do that for you. Like you mentioned, that golden egg uh, answer, just knowing it right off the hop and not questioning yourself. And I will echo uh, whoever told you, always go with your first instinct. You should always go with your first instinct uh, in this format. So now you find yourself with a big win under your belt. You're 1-0, uh, heading into World War Geek in the prime position at number 36. Uh, this is where uh, luck plays a big part because you're coming in to the desk at 36. You might face a table full of people who have been there for an hour maybe two hours even if you got some Bibiani types who are still in at that point. They're exhausted. They've answered a ton of questions. Uh, you know, maybe some of the big, uh, the big names have been knocked out and you find yourself with a tremendous opportunity to maybe walk away with the first geek tackle of their championship. Uh, how, how is that affecting? Is it affecting your training at all? Have you amped up the training knowing that you've got a, a better than average chance of actually walking away with the title? Um, I don't know if it's, yeah, it definitely hasn't made me more nervous. It's made me more excited, which I know that could be definitely a fault there because if you're too hyped up, you're it's if you get real high, it's really easy to fall. And my my kids are so excited about it, and um, they're talking. They talk about it like every day since the match posted on Tuesday. They have talked about it every single day, and that's that's pretty exciting. Like. Um, it's definitely it's definitely going to be a challenge, but at least I, I don't have to go through that war of attrition like like what Cameron had to do, or what he's going to have to do since he got the number one spot. Like I could not imagine. Like that's that's crazy. It is crazy. He's got a long road ahead of him. Uh, I know he's he's accepting the challenge head on though, and he's going to come out guns a blazing. Uh, Cameron, what are you doing to prepare for World War Geek? Uh, we mentioned uh, before the interview that uh, uh, you're working on some flashcards at the moment. Yes, um, 
I, I'm working on flashcards. I've done flashcards for, I'm doing them for all the movies. And uh, I'm glad we have those two, uh, those Google Docs that have all the movies because I would not remember them. If it wasn't for that fact, I, or I'd probably miss one. And that would be just so happened to be the question that I'm asked for and I would have no idea. So um, I'm definitely preparing that way and I'm preparing, again, I'm watching every single match and answering along because I want to be able to say I know the answer in the so many, will it still be 15 seconds uh, per question? Yeah, 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 it'll be 15 seconds. No challenges or anything like that, but you'll st still get about 15 seconds per question. Okay, then yeah, I'm trying to do that as well because if you can't get the question within the 15 seconds right, then it doesn't help. And if I can't do that, um, so going along with them while their other players are playing, I have to do that. And I'm trying not to be like, try to, I'm trying not to be distracted while I'm watching the matches because I don't want to pause it and then the answer come up while I'm like washing the dishes or something. <laughs> and be like, oh, I knew that. But no, if I didn't know it within the 15 seconds, it's no use in knowing it now. So. Well, it sounds like you got a great plan. You're doing everything right. Heading into World War Geek. We're just two short weeks away from World War Geek. I, I can't believe it. I, I hope we're ready for it. But the main reason I wanted to bring you on here, Colton, is because uh, you uh, are not afraid to ask questions, my friend. You ask a ton of questions to all of us in the admin group all the time. And one of your questions I thought was an excellent one, and that's how are the rankings calculated? And that's something we haven't really explained too much on this show. So I thought with Colton here, we would actually go through that a little bit and how exactly we tabulate the ranking. So here's how the ranking system works uh, in the Geek Tackler division. Uh, you get 20 points per win, negative 20 per loss, because wins and losses are kind of the main decider. That's why they get the higher point total. There is a knockout bonus of 10 points or a TKO bonus of five points. If you get knocked out, it's minus 10 points. If you get TKO'd, it's minus five. And then we calculate your points in round one, round two, plus steals, and round three. So all of that together equals your total score. And that's the, the fairest way that I figured we could do these rankings. They're still very much weighted by wins and losses. You get bonuses for knockouts as you should, and you don't get punished uh, for knockouts as you would normally because you're not answering three-point questions, whereas people who are going deep into these matches are answering three-point questions. So you get po points made up for that. So that's how we determine your final score. And so today I thought we would also go through our current top 40 so let's take a look at the top 40 as it stands right now it's actually the top 41 uh because we have uh one extra active competitor right now and we'll be adding a few more names to this list here as we go uh with the next week or so number 41 garth harkness mcmurray at 0-2 uh followed closely by hillbilly scribs only uh one point behind him he's 0-3 unfortunately uh sandy robinson at 0-1 then tony helm ethan naftalin Leila garcia who we talked about earlier coming in at number 36 Devontae King, Dave Ufelder, who uh, made his debut just this past week, and then Jackson Latner, a very unlucky 0-3 at number 33. Uh, Adam Collins, who I expect to see a big jump on this list very, very soon. He's at 32. And Braden Dunlap, uh, another player I expect to see move up that list very, very soon. Let's take a look now at 21 through 30. Of course, at number 30, we have the uh, Malcolm Lay, then TJ Starman. Jimmy Derry coming in at 28. He's got a big match coming up. Uh, against Alex Frost here very soon. Uh, Jay Burns at number 27. He won't be there for long. He'll be moving up. Nick Carley coming in at 26. Andrea Malabag with her first big win against Garth. She comes in at number 25. Jonathan Peck at 24. Nico Rigoli at 23. Uh, Alec Frost at 22. And there you are, Mr. Roberts, at 21. 1-0, 36 points. How are you feeling about your ranking here so far? Uh, I'm feel feeling pretty good about it. Um, the fact that I'm... 21 uh right now that's that's a great opportunity i don't plan on being there for very much longer i plan on being the champion so i won't be on this ranking system well. <laughs> so you'll, you'll be at the top of it with a big c right beside your name then <laughs> okay that's where i plan on being at the end of world war geek but um yeah i mean that's good um uh, I, I recognize a lot of those names of the people that i've watched or i've seen in the discord channel so that's good i uh I like that. Now, you, you said you've been watching a lot of our matches uh, in this uh, bottom half of the rankings. Was there any names that jumped out at you that you expect 
uh, maybe in the second half of our geektacular season to, to make a move up. I had mentioned uh, Jay Burns being one uh, to me that stands out uh, immediately as a guy who's going to jump up. But there's some other names on here too. Is there anybody that has impressed you so far? Um, I mean, there's obvious answers like Alex and Nico. I think they're really good. Um, Andrea, she she's a really good player. Um, trying to think, I can only see twenty one through thirty, so I, I don't know. Uh, There's a the bottom half for you again. Um, yeah, Adam, great player. Like just unfortunate circumstances with that match that he had. But um, yeah, like those are those are a few. And uh, of course, Tony, he took me to the limit. Like at the end of round one and at the end of my round two, I thought the victory was his. So I think uh, I think if he studied a little more uh, or whatever, he would, he, he'd be up there too. I agree. And I also really like the fact you brought up Andrea. Uh, there's a competitor that uh, had her first match, uh, lost, and then uh, didn't play again for the longest time just because of the way schedules worked out. And, and uh, we had a backlog last season of matches that we had to fight her way through with the machete. And so she didn't get a lot of opportunities, but now she's starting to get more active and having a lot of fun, and it's showing, and she's playing some really good uh, movie trivia right now. Let's take a look at the top 20 as it stands today. At number 20, uh, Ryan Caramel Mountain Payne. Of course, he's going to have to go through the qualifier to earn his way back into World War Geek. Let's see how that works out for him next weekend. Then Adelaide Spence, commentatoring nerd at 1-0 coming in at 18. Then Jack the Mayor. Cameron Holtzman uh, made his debut this week, went to a, a five-point question. And again, hitting his five, that helped him raise the rise in the rankings right off the hop at 1-0 with 40 points. Uh, only four points behind you, though. So, see, everything's kind of tight uh, in the middle here. So, there's a uh, not a big jump between, uh, you know, uh, 15, 16, and 24, 25. Those 10 spots are all jammed right close together. Then you got Albert Wuradharma, Jay Vlees, Caleb Coho, Chris Diaz, and Jay Overmeyer. Again, everybody's still really tight in that grouping. And then, of course, the final 10, Caleb Boatman at 1-0, Nick Tuhig at 1-0, Nazario Montenegro, a surprising 2-0. Uh, he just plays geek for the heck of it, and he's knocked off uh, two good competitors to be 2-0. Uh, Mark the Maniac, Kamaira, Antonio Chavez, Ruben Colon, Joe Fairley. Of course, we have the League of Shadows very well represented here. Uh, Mike Shea, the hype man at 3-0. David Garcia at 3-1, and, and of course, Thomas the Warhawk. Scully, the number one ranked competitor in World War Geek. We do not, as of yet, know his number. It hasn't been revealed, but he's a guy I imagine every competitor's got to be hoping draws within the first uh, five or six picks because 135 points in three matches is absolutely incredible. Thomas Warhawk Scully, by far right now, I think the best competitor uh, in the Geektacular division. Uh, Colton, your thoughts on the top 20? Um, no, they're, they're all, um, placed e pretty, pretty evenly. Um, yeah, like those are, those are some, some players right there. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, the League of Shadows is all up in there. They're, they're something. Um, they're, I mean, they got the Star Wars champion right there. So, yep. so that's... Yeah. Speaking of the league, you know for a fact that Joe Fairley comes in at 27, Mark Kamara at 28. There's a good chance they're going to be on the desk when you hit at number 36. Is that a little bit intimidating? Um, not really. I mean, I don't think by that point they, I won't be intimidated, I don't think. Now, I might be intimidated by Joe's British accent. So that's... <laughs> That's something that's pretty intimidating. But, um, no, I don't think uh, – I think once I come in at 36, there there will be no show. Like, I'm I'm, I'm going. I'm going all the way to the top. I'm going to become champion. Excellent. Well, it's important to be confident heading into an event like World War Geek, so that's good to hear. Uh, Colton, is there anything we missed? Anything you want to uh, plug that may be upcoming for you here? Uh, not that I can think of. I'm sure as soon as I exit the studio here, I'll have something in mind. But, um, yeah, it's it's been a, a great experience. I have absolutely loved it. The Discord channel is so so funny. Like, the in-character uh, channel and the spoiler channel are just wonderful to watch, especially up until this week. I didn't have a match, so I was just, like, watching them because I was like, well, I can't really participate because I'm not a person really yet. So, but now I'm here, 
now I'm going to be here and I'm coming for the title. And not only that, I'm, I'm going to become Star Wars champion eventually as well. And I will be, I, 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 I don't want to mess with singles right now because I don't think that's my forte. Geek in Star Wars is my zone. So. There you have it, folks. He's number 36 in World War Geek in just two short weeks. He's got, you got to think about a 70% chance of coming away with the Geektacular Championship. Colton Roberts, thank you so much for joining us this week on Geek Center. When we come back, we're going to have a quick conversation with Nico Rigoli and Nick Carley about what they're doing to prepare for World War Geek. We are back now on Geek Center, and I am pleased to be joined by a couple of my favorite guests, Nico Rigoli and Nick Carley. How's it going tonight, gentlemen? Hello, good sir. Um, I'm happy to be here um, and talk about this game that we all love. And uh, no joke, almost gave me a nervous breakdown 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I'm also, you know, very happy to be a part of it. I'm always happy to be on your show. So, you know, uh, happy to discuss the goings on of the last few matches and to see how everyone's getting ready for World War Geek in a few weeks. Can't believe well, it's almost here. That's right. It's only a couple of weeks away. And I love talking the game with you too, because you take strategy into account and you always have such good insights into the game itself. Uh, we, we've had a, a couple of weeks here where it's been all rookie matches. So I wanted mm -hmm. to get your take on uh, on maybe some of the rookies that have been uh, joining the league or maybe Nico will start with you. Uh, in the last say uh, four matches, has anybody really stood out and impressed you? Um, so I've only actually seen the past two matches. I've been so focused on myself and with Nick and um, helping other people around us get ready for various matches that I haven't been paying as much attention as I would like to the names uh, around the league because th that's the thing about World War Geek. That's the thing about the free-for-all format is there's no... Strategy doesn't really play as much of a part in a free-for-all format as it does for others. So the most you can just do is focus on you and hope that you mm -hmm. put in enough work that it will get you somewhere. So, But, like, if I were to give you one name, I'd probably have to say Cam, and that's just because I, I've seen what Cameron Holtzman can do in other places. Um, he went very far in the recent uh, movie Warzone Teams tournament. Um, he... Uh, almost competed for the uh, full metal uh, trivia teams title last year. Uh, like it, he's a beast in all around trivia, not just geek. And uh, it's because of that wealth of knowledge that he's able to perform as well as he can in a geek setting. Uh, some of the other rookies, it's obvious that they haven't had as much experience uh, as cam has. And so therefore it's too early to tell where they'll end up and what their future holds. All right, Nick, were you able to check out any of the uh, matches uh, the past week? Yeah, I mean, I've, I, I watched, like I said, I watched the last two. Um, and I, I keep, uh, keep up in the results as much as I can. But, uh, like, I mean, Nico basically nailed it on the head there. Uh, Cam, uh, Cam is a rookie to this league, but he is definitely a mainstay in the other leagues. So he's, got, he's been in a lot of different matches. Uh, the knowledge is there, and I know he's, he prepares just as hard as anybody. And uh, the fact that he and that he pulled, or I guess pulled, quote unquote, number one, is going to be a very interesting uh, how that goes across. Because I could see him sticking in there a long time. Uh, I was also very impressed with Colton uh, Supernova Roberts. I thought he did a really good job of holding on at the end there and winning that. And having a brand new person at the 36 spot will also be extremely interesting. So I, we'll, we'll see how he handles that. He clearly has the knowledge. It just we'll just have to see what kind of retains and who else is there with him at the end of the end of the match. We actually had Colton on earlier in the show. Uh, he's Colton. extremely confident coming in at number thirty-six. That uh, he says his first match is not indicative of the talent level he has. He was quite nervous, obviously just getting over the death of his grandfather affected him somewhat. Uh, yeah. but he thinks he's got a lot more to show uh, in this league and coming in at thirty-six could be kind of dangerous. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the seating of World War Geek. We've given away about eight numbers at this point. Let's just refresh everybody's memory. Uh, Colton Roberts in at 36. Uh, we get down into uh, number 28 is Joe Hotfuzz Fairley, member of the League of Shadows. Uh, mm -hmm. One spot behind him at 27 is Mark uh, the Maniac Kamire. So two pretty good slots uh, for the League of Shadows uh, right off the hop. And then we kind of get into uh, in, into the earlier numbers. And we look at somebody like uh, Andre Malabag at 13, uh, Malcolm Lay coming in at number nine. Uh, Albert Wiradharma coming in at number four. And then, of course, 
uh, Cameron Holtzman at number one. Uh, just kind of knowing uh, those eight slots, Nick, we'll start with you. How do you? Th- uh, how is that field kind of shaping up? Are you expecting bigger names to be going later on in the match? Do you kind of like how everything's balanced out thus far? Uh, yeah, so far I think they've. Uh, it's it's a really nice spread of you know good new you know newer players and more experienced players from across the internet. Uh, I mean, I, I I can definitely see both Cameron and Albert making a run. Um, you, you know, it's it's hard. You know, so we've seen it happen that you know people could go twenty some rounds, but you know, fatigue's going to hit you at some point. Um, so you know, I, I do think they have it in them to make it pretty close to the end. Um, and then you know, you got you got Malcolm who's sneaky good at some points. Um, and I think he could definitely make a run as well, depending on who he comes across. And of course, uh, Mark and Joe are in prime spots. Uh, you know, they'll still have to answer probably, you know, 20, 25, 30 questions. So and anything can happen. That's why you love these full, uh, free for all formats. Now, Nico, uh, Nick is your partner. Uh, he's your buddy. Uh, are you hoping you guys are kind of grouped close together in World War Geek? Or would you like to see yourself get a later number and maybe Nick down in the teens somewhere? Um, I would. Mm, <laughs> I have thought about this. I have thought about this, and you know, the, the, obviously, I'm a competitor too. I'm not just his, his manager, and he's not just my manager. We manage each other. Uh, uh but like, I, we're competitors. We obviously want to win this match. We care that much about this game that we're willing to do whatever it takes to win. So. I'm hoping he gets a good number. I'm just hoping I get a better one personally. <laughs> can't argue with that. That's a great answer. I know that was a little <laughs> question. I just wanted to put you on the spot, Nico, because you're a little stressed about coming on here tonight and, and knowing your number. Do you maybe want to address that? <laughs> um, yeah. So there have long before MTFO was even a thing, there were a couple other free for alls that have happened in the time that I've been around. Um, Grant Gregory, uh, El Diablo Australiano, he has held uh, a couple of free for alls in his uh, now defunct uh, comic book trivia league, and in those I could not get out of one round. Even when I had pretty good scores in the round I was in, I could not uh, get past one round. Uh, same goes for the recent uh, free for all that Tony Heal just had in uh, uh, featured presentations. Couldn't get past one round. And Multiplex once had a gauntlet match uh, to end off 2018, and I got through one round, and then I got knocked out the very next round. So it's like I have not had the best luck with matches that follow a free-for-all format. The one that did go my way was um, at Trivia for Thon 2, the uh, tag team turmoil match for the inaugural Combat Wrestling Trivia Tag Team Championships. Me and Matt Rosa, we started at number one, and we made it to the end out of, uh, I think, six or seven teams. So it did work out in our favor. Um, but that was wrestling trivia, which is my bread and butter more so than movie stuff. Uh, so, like, there's a lot of nerves going in here. And I did mention that I almost had a nervous breakdown before we joined the show. And, you know, peek behind the curtain, I've got a match taping coming up in a couple of days. And, you know, you if you care enough about this game it will drive you insane. It will Mm -hmm. mess with you in so many ways. It will get your heart racing at like three beats a second. It will get your mind running at a thousand miles an hour. Did I study enough? Did I study too much? Did I forget everything I just learned because of the fact that I've been trying to process all this information? Uh, The unknowns of where will the wheel lie? Is there enough game tape on my opponent? And the pressure, the pressure of wanting to succeed because again, peek behind the curtain, we're shooting this particular seg- segment at Friday nights, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Adelaide Spence and Call to the Families is going to go on in about two hours, and they're going to talk about potential fan leagues, uh, fan leaguers that could be drafted by the Schmodown managers as free agents. And Nick and I have been busting our ass off, and I feel like our names are likely not going to get mentioned at all in that conversation. And there's a, and so that just increases the pressure to succeed to push ourselves as hard as we possibly can and so like it's just it 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 gets to you it gets to you because like when you that's the that's one thing that uh when i give my heart and soul to something it, it eats me up inside 
if I'm not getting the recognition for all that hard work and effort that I've been putting in, I, it, I do not want to feel like I missed out on the potential that I have to be something. I don't want Nick to feel like he's missed out on the potential he has to be something. I want us to feel like we left our mark here when uh, in like five years or so when we finally decide, you know what, let's take a break. We've given a lot of us to this game and we could use some time to our families and just not worrying about who directed what. Uh, it, do, do you see where I'm getting at here? <laughs> I, I, I certainly do. Uh, but I, I can tell you right here, uh, the MTFO appreciate you as the number 26 and number two, 22 ranked competitors in the Geek Tacular division out of uh, currently 41, about to be 45 competitors. That's pretty darn good. You're one win away from making a push into the top 10 and really get into the conversation as among the elite uh, of this division. And we've got some heavy hitters in this division. Uh, Nico, I'm going to give you one last opportunity. If, if you don't want to know your number, if you'd like to be surprised, uh, you can say so now and I won't uh, won't show it to you. <laughs> I mean, it's your call, buddy. <laughs> I'm showing Nick's really? either way. I'm not giving yeah. him an option. <laughs> That's fine. Look, show it. Show okay. It. Well, we're going to start with Nick Carley anyway, just so we can let... Uh, Nico, stew on a little bit longer. Let's find out where Big Sal is going to end up in World oh, War Geek. Okay. Round and round we go. Where she stops. Mm -hmm. Number 32. Whoa. Number 32 nice. for Nick, Big Sal Carly. Not too bad, so my friend. How you feeling? Wow. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't. I think that's amazing. I'm, I'm absolutely blown away on that high. To be completely honest with you, because I, you know, I was 0-2 to start, and then I, you know, I got my win and I was good, and I'm like, I'll be happy in the middle of the pack. But I mean, I'm, you know, hopefully, you know, it is the luck or the luck and the trivia gods are with me that I start that late in the match. That's absolutely fantastic. Nico, your thoughts? Woo. <laughs> wow. Um, so usually the way these things go is. You, you, let's see here. First match we had this week, Colton gets 36. Second match we had this week, Cam gets number one. So I feel like if Nick just got 32, then I'm about to get a single digit number. Oh. Well, let's put you out of your misery, Nico. So uh, the older picture. Let's find out where you are going to enter into World War Geek, my friend. Here we go. You can feel the tension. It's number 17. Number okay. 17, okay. not too shabby, right. not too right. bad at all. Smack in the middle, smack in the middle, basically. That's not bad at all. No, nope. okay. what are you thinking with that, Nico? Um, it's going to be a struggle, but I think I can manage it. I, I just want to get through one round. Uh, I want to break <laughs> my. I want to break my streak of bad uh, free for all performances. Yeah, and that, and just to chime in on that, I I think for both of us, I just I'm hoping for two really good performances. You know, you know, being in there five or six rounds, answering a lot of questions. I mean, and at least to, uh, long enough for people to notice that you did a good job. You know, that's the main thing. And and maybe yeah. take out a couple members of the League of Shadows along the way. I I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I would <laughs> I would not uh, I would not be mad about that either. So. You know, because we're just hey, we're here, we're here to play, we're here to compete, and we're, we're you know we're we're going to go to going, we are going to go to win. So we're we're here to we're, win. We're here we're here, we're here to win, and we are here to give our heart and souls in every performance we have. Exactly. Uh, I will point out. I will point out one thing, uh, as well as the of course the winner of World War Geek gets the inaugural Geektacular Championship, uh, but we do have an MVP award as well. So mm -hmm. coming in at number seventeen, if you can make it uh, a good fair uh, bit. You'd be right up there for an MVP award, and the winner of the MVP will get a title shot in whatever division they choose. So, uh, you know, you can't get that at 32, I'm thinking, but you can to get that at 17. So there's Any something to keep division, in the back huh? of your mind. Hey, Any yeah. division. Any, Any division. division. Hmm. I have plans now. <laughs> have plans. Perfect. All right, uh, gentlemen, is there anything else you want to address about World War Geek before we go here tonight? No, I think we think we covered it pretty well. Um, I I'm just super excited. You know, it's already two weeks away. It time flew by. I mean, when you're sitting at home doing much of nothing, it happens sometimes. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm excited. I know everyone's going to come to play, so it's going to be a great time either way. Nico, 
<laughs> I feel like I've said a lot of what I wanted to say regarding World War Geek, and <laughs> I'm just going to give you guys the fight of my life, and Nick is going to do the same. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we can ask. Uh, two weeks away, World War Geek is going to be fantastic. Next week, we are doing a special live Geek Center on Friday. Uh, time to be determined. Keep your eyes out on the Discord channel. We are going to do the live draw for the qualifying match. For all those folks who are waiting for their first win, for them to qualify into World War Geek, we'll be uh, doing that draw live on Geek Center and then taping that match on Saturday. It's going to air the following Thursday. So we'll know on Thursday who the qualifier is coming into World War Geek uh, from our rookies and offers who have yet to, uh, to get through. Uh, I can also mention that uh, I was able to tape two very special guests who helped us out with some pre-recorded questions. Uh, I can't say who, but the fifth question Sweet. of every round will be asked by a special Schmodown uh, celebrity. I'm nice. uh, very excited about that. And I think we've got our guest hosts all lined up as well. So expect to see Ooh. a few big hosts on the desk for World War Geek as well. Excellent. But that's all I can tell you for now. I want to thank uh, uh, Colton Roberts uh, earlier in the night for joining us. And, of course, I'd like to thank Nico and Nick for joining me here in the second half of the show. I'd like to thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next week live on Geek Center.